So hi folks, this is Vito from Vito's Astro Forum and I just noticed that CWO released a brand new harmonic drive mount during the Neve 2023 convention. Uh, it's the CWO AM3 and they have shared some details of that new harmonic drive mount on their website. So um, I thought it would be fun just to go over the details that are shared by ZWO and let I will just let you know what I think as we go along. And uh, of course, I'm also interested in your opinion as well. So are you considering to buy this mount? Do you like this mount? Do you have any questions about this harmon new harmonic drive mount? Let me know in the comment section below so we can all share our thoughts and, and get into a conversation. Um, let's first take a look at the video. They actually showcase uh, different new products and one of them is the uh, the AM5 and uh, they talk about it for about 20 seconds. <laughs> so let's take a look at the video first and uh, then we can look at the details on the website. By about 30%. And finally, we are proud to introduce our new AM3 mount. The new high performance harmonic mount offers astrophotographers exceptional performance at an even more affordable price. It carries a payload of up to 8 kilograms with no counterweight and up to 13 kilograms with the addition of a 5 kilogram counterweight. The newly added Bluetooth unit makes wireless connection without hand controllers possible. Carry less, capture more. Carry less, capture more. Well, yeah, that's pretty interesting. Not a lot of details shared in the product showcase video, but uh, that that's okay. It's just about announcing they have new products. So let's see what, what we can find on, on the website. And the first thing to take a look at is, of course, the price. So the first thing that is also mentioned here, let me... Hopefully you can see it like this. So uh, let's look at the price. And the AM3 is going to cost you $1,500. And that's for the mount uh, head only. So $1,499 for the mount head, US dollars. And if you buy it in combination with the TC40, so that's a carbon tripod that CWO also releases with the AM5. Um, it will cost you about $1,800. So $1,798. And I when I saw these prices, I immediately have had to think about the classic German equatorial mounts that are also on, I would say, the astrophotography market, uh, which have about the same payload capacity. And for instance, a very um, famous uh, classic German equatorial mount that has been used for years is the Skywatcher Hack 5 Pro. And that mount is available for about 1500 1400 to 1500 US dollars. So the AM3 is pretty close to that. Now, of course, there are also cheaper mounts like the Celestron AVX available, another classic German equatorial mount that uh, has been around for years and years, maybe decades. Uh, it costs $1,200. So then the AM3 is still a little bit more expensive. But yeah, the distance between like the, the distance between harmonic drive mount prices and classic German equatorial prices prices seems to be decreasing lately so that's pretty interesting to see anyway let's take a look at the am3 so portable precise and stable yeah let's hope so <laughs> um so this is an infographic uh, which is i think really useful so it shows the maximum payload capacity uh, the multifunction, the ways to control it um so let's get a let's go over that so first is the the maximum payload capacity um, the mount can carry up to 8 kilograms of payload. So payload means, um, or load capacity just means that you have a telescope, you have a camera, you have a filter wheel, uh, you have some guiding gear, and you, all, all, you will all put that on that mount. So the, all that weight of your telescope gear combined uh, is the payload capacity or the load capacity, as it is mentioned here. And so if you're not going to use a counterweight weight, which is possible with the harmonic drive mount, you can put up to 8 kilos or 18 pounds on that mount. And if you're going to use a counterweight, you can even put 13 kilos or about 29 pounds in the US uh, on this mount. So that's pretty interesting. And that puts it into the category of like the Skywatcher Hack 5 Pro, Celestron AVX in terms of uh, payload capacity. Um, so very interesting. Uh, Multifunction, it says here. So you can use this mount as an equatorial, in equatorial mode and in LTS mode. Yeah, equatorial mode, 
I'm only using my mouse in equatorial mode because if you want to photograph the night sky, you need equatorial mode, you need to polar align your mount to precisely track the objects in the night sky. But if you are a vis visual ob observer and you're going to use the mount uh, just for, yeah, for visual observation of the night sky, you can also skip the polar alignment proce uh, procedure uh, and put the mount in alt s mode and you're still able to slew to objects you're interested in looking at in the night sky so that's pretty amazing to have that option available on the am3 and those options are not available on like a lot of ger classic german equatorial modes um the way it is controlled, so you can you have different options here. You have a hand controller and an app and even Bluetooth. I think Bluetooth is new here. I didn't see any Bluetooth connection on my ZWO AM5, if I'm correct. Um, but anyway, uh, the hand controller is pretty uh, pretty easy to use. Uh, we will talk about that a little bit later on. And this, this smartphone control, um, yeah, you can download, if you're interested, you can download the ASI mount app from your Play Store or App Store and just have a look at that ASI mount app. It looks a lot like Stellarium and I really liked it. So anyway, now of course this uh, it says here precision control. So we are dealing with a harmonic drive mount or strain wave gear mount. Harmonic drive is just a company. So it's actually strain wave technology. So there are a couple of benefits when using the AM3. First thing is the size. So it's very small. Uh, also in comparison to like the classic German equatorial mount heads. And also very lightweight. Um, so we'll talk about that later and of course that makes it very easy to to transport the AM3 to take it with you to a dark sky place and also if you don't need a counterweight it, it saves a little bit of hassle. Uh, German, classic German equatorial mounts need to be balanced with a counterweight um, and you don't necessarily need to go through that process with the AM3. So anyway let's, let's see what they have to, to say here. So let's start here. The traditional equatorial mount requires heavy counterweights. <laughs> it can be very difficult to keep balance in RA and deck directions and also inconvenient for transit and storage, which brings amateur astrophotographers a lot of pain when they're out for imaging. I wouldn't say a lot of pain, but it is a little bit of a hassle to take an extra counterweight and balance the mount. Okay, so some of the strain wave gear drive mounts are relatively simple in functions, insufficient in load capacity and also not very very stable in use. Well, I would say that the, the major benefit here of this AM3 is that it, it drops below the $2,000 price range. So I think this is the cheapest harmonic drive mount available on the astrophotography market today. So I would say that would be the main benefit. <laughs> uh, other, other harmonic drive mounts, there are some stable drive mounts out, out there. Anyway, let's let's continue. To solve the above issues, ZWO developed the ASI mount series. No need for a counterweight with a self weight of 3.9. So that's important. Set that is the weight of the mount head. So about four kilos, which is about nine pounds. Um, for instance, if I compare that to like a classic German equatorial mount like this, uh, the Hack 5 Pro, uh, the Hack 5 Pro has a mount head of 10 kilos. And the Celestron AVX has a mount head of 8 kilos. So actually we are looking at a 2 to 2.5 times reduction in weight. If we compare like the classic German equatorial mounts to the AM3 uh, weight. So the AM3 has a large load capacity from 8 to 13 kilos. So also in terms of payload that puts it in the category of, I would call them beginner astrophotography mounts. Um, while portability is important, stability is also essential in use. Instead of blindly pursuing the lightweight of the mount body, CWO is more so along the lines of stability for an entire use. I'm not sure what they are. I, I, of course, we want a mount that is stable. So if you, for instance, experience any wind gusts, um, you want that mount to be firmly grounded and uh, you, you want to take multi-minute pictures if you're going to use it for astrophotography um, yeah, without noticing any kinds of instability because otherwise you will end up with uh, elongated stars or even star trails in your picture. So I, I have been using the AM5, so that's the big brother of the ZWO AM3 for a couple of astrophotography sessions 
and I didn't experience any issues with stability. So I was able to to take like up to five minute uh, uh, exposures with the AM5. So hopefully this will also be true, true for the AM3. Um, the internal structure of the body is optimized with strain wave gear reducer and a synchronous bell. So yeah, that's different from uh, the classic German equatorial mounts, which mostly have servo motors. Whether or not this will lead to a more accurate tracking and guiding remains to be seen, of course. Uh, I think CWO has a lot of confidence in it, otherwise they would not bring this mount to the market. Um, so bringing more accurate control and an amazing reduction ratio of 300 to 1. So yeah, that, this is one of the main advantages of this harmonic drive mount because it has this amazing reduction ratio, <laughs> as it says here, re amazing reduction ratio of 300 to 1. You can make these like these small sized lightweight mounts. And that's, that is, I think, the main selling point of the AM3 over other uh, classic German equatorial mounts. And yeah. Yeah, so as I said, like two to two and a half times weight reduction if you compare it to other mounts that are available on this on the on the market, which have a, a, a similar payload capacity. Um, buh, buh, buh. It also uses it is also multifunctional and it can be used as equatorial and LTS mount as we discussed. So for visual and for astrophotography, you can use this mount, which is awesome. Uh, you can control it via Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or a hand controller. Okay. So here we have another picture of the strain wave gear and the synchronous belt. Ah, here we actually have a picture of the the strain wave gear. So it's the ZWO fourteen one hundred. Um, I think the AM five has a different one. It has a model seventeen, and this is a model fourteen. Uh, I don't know. Of course, it's a different strain wave gear. I cannot interpret that. Um, but here we have the PE report. And I noticed something. So first of all, when we look at the periodic error, that's just uh, the amount of deviation um, in arc seconds the mount has. So if you're just going to switch on the mount without any guiding, you can see that it has a periodic error of about here. We have uh, minus 15 more or less. And here we have plus 5, a little bit over plus 5 to plus 10. So yeah, here it says the periodic error is stably controlled at like plus minus 20 arc seconds. Now, I want to say two things. First of all, um, these kind of periodic errors, um, if you're going to use this mount for astrophotography, you will definitely need uh, extra guiding gear. So you need a guide cam and a guide scope um, and like PHT2 or your ASI Air uh, to accurately guide this mount. And hopefully this mount will then be uh, between one and two arc seconds. Uh, in guiding, so you can use it in combination with a small focal length telescope up to 500 millimeters, for instance. Um, so that remains to be seen. I think CWO already tested it and uh, probably it will be the case that uh, this this AM3 will be up for, uh, is, is uh, tracking and guiding well enough to, to use it with a, a small sized focal length telescope and a camera and some like guiding gear. Um, another thing I noticed is that this picture looks an awful lot on, on the picture released with the AM5. So this is the AM3 pictures they released. This is the AM... Oh, this is the AM5 picture. So AM3, AM5. You can see it here. AM3. AM5. So when looking at the differences, uh, actually, there, I don't think there are any. I, th I think they just uh, accidentally uh, used the, the G JPEGs, the, the, the pictures of the AM5 for the AM3. So ZWO, maybe you can update this picture with actual AM3 uh, test reports. And we can see here, it, they tested it from 0 to 360 seconds. So that's a little over five minutes, six minutes. Anyway, so the mount head weighs about four kilos, so nine pounds, that's pretty awesome. We already discussed that. Um, here they show how to connect a counterweight and a counter bar to the mount. You can also do that. So is there any interesting details? Let's see. So the counter here, 
eight kilograms without, 13 kilograms with a counterweight, supported counterweight is five kilograms. So you can use counterweights up to five kilograms. The counterweight should be secured on a counterweight bar of no more than 25 centimeters in length. Okay. You can use it in EQ and LS mode. Now, very interesting. This is also very interesting. You can, um, you can use the AM3 uh, from 0 to 90 degrees latitude. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, some of the classic German equatorial mounts, they are limited in uh, the latitude. Uh, you can use actually these, uh, these uh, telescope mounts. The AM3, you can use it anywhere on Earth. And yeah. So that's pretty awesome, wireless control. So this is actually the ASI mount app. Um, I have a separate video where I show you different ways to connect to the ZWO AM5. I will put that uh, in the video description below. And I'm pretty sure that the AM3 will work in a similar way. So um, you can see it here. This is the ASI mount uh, application. So you can connect the AM3 over Wi-Fi to that app. And it's pretty awesome. It has a Stellarium-like uh, view and you can for instance that magnifying glass will if you press on it it will show you all kinds of interesting astrophotography targets or just visible visible uh, deep sky objects that are uh, in the night sky on that particular evening for your location so it's a pretty interesting application you can download it and check it out um, yeah, this is the hand controller. It's super easy to, to set up and use. I already have the same hand controller for the AM5. So yeah, apparently, so basically the joystick, uh, you can use it to, to slew the telescope mount in any kind of direction. If you press on that joystick, you switch from fast to slow slewing mode. So that's also interesting um, because sometimes you want to have to roughly slew your telescope to a target and then you press that joystick and then you can fine tune uh, the position of your telescope using the slow mode. Now then you have also this T button that's actually tracking. So if you click on that button, it will start tracking uh, the night nice sky for you. And you have this cancellation bot, uh, button uh, on the bottom. Uh, if you press that, the tracking, you will cancel the tracking. And if you long press this button, the mount will go back to its home position it was in when you started your astrophotography session or your visual observation session. Um, can, you can also use it in combination with the ASI Air, of course. Uh, here we have a particular view of the different knobs. So yeah, this is also interesting. It's a, it's a dual saddle. So if you have a Vixen of or Los Mandy style telescope, both these kind of telescope connections will uh, fit on the the saddle of the AM3. So that's pretty awesome. Um, here we have the different connections. Uh, USB port. I didn't mention that. So USB, you can use this uh, AM3 also in combination with a computer or a laptop uh, when you install the SCOM platform and the ASI SCOM driver. You can use it on your, you can control the mount on your computer with any kind of astrophotography software you may like. Here we have a separate SD4 guiding port, which I never use. <laughs> uh, but anyway, nice to have. Uh, hand controller port and of course the power supply and here we have the specifications is there anything periodic error plus minus 20 arc seconds so as i said before you're definitely going to need some uh, all uh, guiding gear uh, for astrophotography with this am3 mount pe duration little under five minutes hmm so anyway, I think this is all I have to say right now. I don't see any specific uh, things here in the specifications. Yeah, you have different slew rates. And I'm sure you can also like track the night sky in sidereal mode. So you're tracking the stars in sidereal mode. But you also have uh, a different uh, tracking speed for the moon and the sun. It's not mentioned here. So here's some pictures. What's in the box? So we can also... Oh, it has actually a little, nice little box here. Um, looks like, like a brick, right? Anyway, um, AM3, and you have some a cable. You have a PE report. Um, I think this is the guide to set up the telescope mount. The hand controller is included, and this is the like basically the, the cable of the hand controller. So, all right. 
Yeah, I, th I think the AM3 will be very easy to set up. It will be very similar to the CWO AM5. Uh, this is all I have for you right now. So let me know, what do you think? Uh, are you considering this AM3 mount or do you think that the classic German equatorial mount <laughs> will still be more favorable to this AM3? Uh, let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you have any questions and um, yeah, clear skies. See you next time.